In the next 10 minutes, you're going to learn everything you need to know about squash. We'll cover the court layout, basic rules, scoring system, and even some pro tips to get you started. By the end, you'll be ready to step onto the court with confidence. Let's start with the court. A squash court is a rectangular area enclosed by four walls. It's 9.7 meters long and 6.4 meters wide. You'll notice key areas like the service boxes, the tee area in the middle, and the tin at the bottom of the front wall. Now, for equipment, you'll need a racket, which can weigh between 90 to 255 grams, and a ball. The ball is small, about 40 millimeters in diameter. There are different types of balls for various skill levels, so you can choose one that suits you. To hold your racket, use a grip that feels comfortable and natural. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent. Try this stance at home to get a feel for it. Squash is an exciting sport that offers both physical and mental benefits. As we go through the rules, you'll see why it's such a thrilling game to play. Now that we've covered the basics, let's dive into the serve. Your first step to squash dominance. The serve sets the tone for each rally, so mastering it is crucial. To start, you need to know where to stand. When serving, you must have at least one foot inside the service box. This small square on either side of the court is your starting point. Now, where should the ball go? Your serve must hit the front wall above the service line and below the outline. After that, it needs to land in the opposite back quarter of the court. If it hits the tin or goes out of bounds, it's a fault and you lose the serve. Let's break down a basic serve technique. Stand in the service box with your feet shoulder width apart. Hold the ball in your non-racket hand. Drop it and strike it with your racket as it falls. Aim for the front wall remembering the target area we just discussed. Practice this motion at home against a wall to get a feel for it. One important rule to remember is service alternation. After you win a point, you switch sides for your next serve. This adds a layer of strategy to the game, as you'll need to be comfortable serving from both sides of the court. Here's a pro tip to improve your serve accuracy. Visualize the target area on the front wall where you want the ball to land. This mental image can help guide your serve and improve your precision over time. To really nail your serve, try this practice drill. Mark out the service line and outline on a wall at home or at the court. Start close to the wall and practice hitting. Serves between these lines. As you get more consistent, move further back to replicate actual serving distance. Aim for at least 50 serves in each practice session, focusing on accuracy rather than power. Remember, a great serve isn't just about raw power. Placement and accuracy are key. Mix up your serves, aiming for different areas of the court. This unpredictability will keep your opponents on their toes and potentially give you an advantage right from the start of each rally. As you practice your serve, you'll start to develop muscle memory. This is crucial in squash as it allows you to focus on strategy during the game rather than worrying about the mechanics of your serve. One last thing to keep in mind, the serve is just the beginning of the rally. While it's important to have a strong serve, don't neglect the rest of your game. A good serve sets you up for success, but you'll need a well-rounded skill set to truly excel at squash. Now that you've mastered the serve, let's dive into the heart of the game, rallying. This is where the real action happens and where you'll outsmart your opponent. First, let's cover the basic rally rules. When the ball comes to you, you must hit it above the tin and below the outline on the front wall. Remember, you're allowed to let the ball bounce once before returning it. If it bounces twice, you lose the point. Controlling the tee area is crucial in squash. This tee-shaped intersection in the middle of the court is prime real estate. By dominating this space, you force your opponent to cover more ground, giving you a strategic advantage. Let's break down the basic shots you'll use during a rally. The forehand is your go-to shot when the ball is on your dominant side. For a backhand, you'll swing across your body to hit the ball on your non-dominant side. A volley is when you hit the ball before it bounces, often used to keep your opponent off balance. Try shadowing these movements at home. Stand in your ready position, then practice swinging your arm as if you're hitting these shots. This will help you get a feel for the motions without a racket or ball. Here's a pro tip. Vary your shot pace by mixing up the speed and power of your shots. You keep your opponent guessing. A slow, high lob followed by a quick, low drive can throw off their rhythm and create openings for you to exploit. To improve your shot consistency and accuracy, try this solo wall drill. Find a wall and mark out a squash court's front wall dimensions. Start close to the wall, hitting the ball continuously above where the tin would be. As you get more comfortable, move further back. Focus on maintaining a rally with yourself for as long as possible. Now, let's briefly touch on the interference rule. Squash is a fast-paced game played in a confined space, so there will be times when you and your opponent get in each other's way. If you obstruct your opponent's access to the ball or their swing, a let may be called and the point is replayed. In more serious cases of interference, a stroke might be awarded, giving the point to the obstructed player. Remember, the key to successful rallying is a combination of skill, strategy, 
and sportsmanship. Always try to give your opponent a fair chance to play their shot. Now that we've covered the basics of serving and rallying, let's dive into how you actually win a game of squash. This is where the real excitement begins. Squash uses a scoring system called PARS, which stands for Point A Rally Scoring. It's pretty straightforward. Every rally results in a point, regardless of who served. This means the game moves quickly, and every shot counts. Games are typically played to 11 points, so you might think that the first player to reach 11 wins, right? Well, not exactly. There's a twist. You need to win by two clear points. If the score reaches 10 to 10, the game continues until one player leads by two points. This can lead to some intense, nail-biting finishes. Let's break it down with an example. Imagine you're playing against your friend. The score is 10 to 9 in your favor. You're one point away from winning, but if your friend scores the next point, it becomes 10 to 10. Now you're in a situation where you need to score two points in a row to clinch the game. The pressure is on. In competitive matches, players usually play the best of five games. This means the first player to win three games wins the entire match. It's a test of skill, endurance, and mental fortitude. Now, let's talk about keeping score. In squash, it's the server's responsibility to announce the score before each serve. This might seem like a small detail, but it's crucial for maintaining the flow of the game and avoiding disputes. Here's a pro tip for staying focused during those crucial points visualization. Before each rally, take a deep breath and picture yourself making the perfect shot. This mental strategy can help you stay calm under pressure and make better decisions on the court. To help you internalize the scoring system, try this practice drill. Find a partner and simulate a game situation. Start at 8 to 8 and play out the end of a game. Take turns serving and keep score as you would in a real match. This will help you get comfortable with the scoring system and the pressure of close games. Remember, Squash is as much a mental game as it is physical. Staying focused and maintaining your composure, especially when the score is close, can make all the difference between winning and losing. As you play more games, you'll start to develop strategies around the scoring system. For example, when you're ahead, you might play more conservatively to protect your lead. When you're behind, you might take more risks to try and catch up. Understanding these nuances will elevate your game to the next level. Now that you've learned the basics of squash, it's time to put your knowledge into action. Remember the key points we covered, the court layout, serving rules, rally tactics, and scoring system. These form the foundation of your squash skills. Your next step is to find a local squash court and start playing. Don't worry if you're not perfect at first, practice makes progress. Squash is an incredible workout, burning up to 800 calories per hour. It's great for your fitness and reflexes. Here's something exciting to motivate you. Squash is set to be included in the 2028 Summer Olympics. This is a huge milestone for the sport. Who knows? With dedication and practice, you could be watching future Olympic squash champions or even competing yourself. So grab a racket, find a court, and start your squash journey today. You've got the knowledge. Now it's time to play.